Last year, he was number one, and he comes from a long line of winners. The stage is set for local heroes and champion bloodlines. In the frozen north, it's a battle that spans generations. But in the end, there can only be one team of top dogs. Welcome to the 40th running of the Canadian Open Dog Sled Championship. We are just outside Fort Nelson, BC, along the beautiful, frozen Musqua River. I'm Al Stafford, and along with me is color commentator Faye Cousins. And Faye, it's about 30 below out there today. What's that going to mean for some of these dog sled teams? The dogs handle the cold temperatures well. The spectators may be a wee bit chilly, and certainly the mushers will need to dress accordingly. What you're going to be looking at today is the open class on a 15-mile course along the Musqua River. This race, by the way, is dedicated to longtime volunteer Alvis Streeper. And to honor her today, they have decided to retire the number one race bib, so we won't see any of those out there on the course today. Alva will be sorely missed for her enthusiasm and hospitality to all mushers at this race. As the teams and the handlers make final preparations for today's race, let's take a look at some of the top competitors that we'll be watching this afternoon. This is Pixie and Ellie, a couple of two-year-olds that defending champion Ross Saunderson has chosen to lead his team in the competition today. Saunderson knows what he's doing. He's won this event three times in the last five years. Our second contender today is 17-year-old Buddy Streeper. You're looking at Swifty and Tina. Now these are dogs out of the World Championship Streeper Kennel. As I mentioned, Streeper won this event in 1997. He was also North American Rookie of the Year. Our third contender, David Hockman. David's leaders are Malcolm and Shep. Malcolm, just a three-year-old. David will be driving 16 dogs today, all Alaskan Huskies, and he races out of Carlowey, Manitoba. Up next is Buzz, a two-year-old, and Linger, a four-year-old. Now these lead Kevin Cook's team. Kevin, a Canadian Open rookie out of Priestville, Saskatchewan, but his father, Ray Cook, is a veteran of the Canadian Open Championships here in Fort Nelson. Cooter is just two years old, but Eric Lancer has chosen to make this dog one of the leaders on his team. Lancer says Cooter is the kind of dog you maybe only come across once every five years or so. Lancer considered to be an up and coming racer on this sled dog circuit. Our final contending team of the afternoon is led by Ears and Sister, both four years old. A lot of experience at the front end of Bill Kornmuller's team. He's a veteran driver racing out of Willow, Alaska. While the mushers make their final preparations in the staging area, let's take a look at what brings these drivers to this demanding sport of sled dog racing. Dogs here are something different from what I had really expected. I guess I've got this Hollywood television image in my mind. Most people are, think of sled dogs, they think of the Walt Disney version. You know, the Siberian or the Malamute with real long hair, the, the bushy tail and the, and the bright blue eyes taking what that dog had to offer and crossbred it with, uh, with different hounds and different other dogs to, to make what's called the Alaskan Husky right now, which is one of the, you know, one of the better dogs for racing. There's not, they're not thin, they just look like thing, but they're, they're in shape. You know, they're not carrying a lot of hair because the biggest problem we have is they overheat. So when they're running as hard as they do and expending as much energy as they do, if they have a, a thick coat on them, they get too hot. Yeah, I like Siberian Huskies, you know, I'd see them around and I was wanting to own them. Someone had a dog for sale and I got it and uh, I take it out for walks at night and put a little harness on it and go walk it and man, I'll just go for a power walk. There's been sled dog racing here for 40 years. Yeah, it's, it's incredible when you really think about it, you know, it's been, and it really hasn't changed all that much. It's still the same creatures. Uh, uh, we refined the breeding a bit and you know, a little more technical on the, on the feeding and the equipment that we use, but still it's a man and a dog, you know. You can start out real young and you can still do it when you're 60 or 70 years old. Men race against women. But I think the biggest appeal is just the love of animals. All right, Kaylee, good dog. 
pretty soon you get a few more dogs and a few more dogs, and the rest is history. <laughs> Ended up with, I've got 46 dogs right now. So now when I'm driving 18 dogs, every dog must know his name. If I say Hilda, smarten up. She's got to know that I'm talking to her, and Debbie, a dog two, two spots behind her, knows while he's talking to Hilda. Uh, you just watch the dogs, see how eager they are to run, and, and you know the dogs are really running and pulling hard that are uh, very excited to be racing. Remember, these dogs are bred and have been bred for over 100 years for the sole purpose of racing. It's the dog's enthusiasm to always want to go that you sort of feel guilty when you don't run them, so you sort of get into this habit of running them a lot. Remember, the person is running 20 dogs. The leaders are like 150 feet ahead of them, and there's absolutely no reins or no brakes, uh, like a car or a snow machine that you can stop. It's all voice control between you and the dogs. We that have been in the sport a long time, we don't talk who has the best dog team, because everybody has good dog teams. The team that wins is the guy that has the best leaders. If you don't have a leader, you don't have a dog team. It's the same as driving a car with no steering wheel. You raise 20 or 30 pups each year, always looking for the, for the Wayne Gretzky or you know, the, the super dog. Oh, that's definitely the leaders are the key to the whole operation. I guess it's something like rodeo. Once it gets in your blood, you know, you just, I don't know what I'd do without dogs. Well, that's one way to keep the mitts on the snowsuit. When we come back, a look at the race course and a recap of day one at the Canadian Open Dog Sled Championships. Welcome back to the 40th running of the Canadian Open Sled Dog Championships. We're just outside Fort Nelson, BC. I'm Al Stafford alongside color commentator Faye Cousins. A clear and cold day, and as you can see right now, some of the six dog class is still out on the race course. Let's take a look now at what the open class will be facing in the race this afternoon. It's a 15 mile course looping at either end and running along both banks of the Musqua River. And Faye, the course is well marked, certainly, but let's talk about the challenges the mushers will be facing out there. The mushers will be depending on their lead dogs to listen and respond very carefully along this course. There are a great many skidoo trails that cross and recross the trail. The dogs will need to listen for commands to go straight ahead, to go jeer, haw for left or right. Now there's not much wind out there and it's a very flat terrain because they're running on a frozen river so I would imagine we'll be seeing some pretty fast race times this afternoon. Yes, I think the teams will be able to find their pace easily and will proceed quickly along the course. So let's take a look now at what happened on day one. Saturday was cloudy, overcast, not much warmer than Sunday, and there was flat lighting conditions out there as well. It was the first open sprint race of the season for many of these teams, so nobody really knew what to expect from their dogs. First day is interesting. We gotta, you gotta let the dogs what they can. You know, first race of the year, we don't have a feel for anybody yet. You just gotta let it play out. Come on, Jack. I'm a little nervous going out today, to be honest with you. Like, usually I have a pretty good set of veteran leaders, and this year is the year that uh, we're running a lot of young dogs, a lot of two-year-olds, and uh, if we make it around, we'll go fast, but we could end up blowing a few corners. This is going to be fast, it's going to be cold on the river, a little colder than we'd like to see for the spectators, but the dogs will eat that up. They love it when it's cool like that, so it's going to be a really fast-paced race. There's some really good teams here, like best mushers around in the world here, just a couple missing, so it'll be a really interesting race. Here's some of Saturday's race action. That's Dave Hockman wearing the number three race bib, and he had a very solid day behind the 16 Alaskan Huskies that he runs. Also out on the course on Saturday, number 14, Eddie Streeper. Streeper ran in the top six on Saturday, in fact, finishing just two minutes behind Saturday's leader. Bill Kornmuller ran strong on Saturday as well, although he did run into a bit of a common problem for mushers, didn't he, Faye? Bill experienced a tangle here, probably resulting from having passed John Capablanc. John is waiting for him to get this tangle straightened out. Um, the rules state that a musher will not pass within a half a mile of having been passed. 
Young Sarah Streeper drives a team trained by her father, Terry, a former world champ. Well, I haven't been able to train all that much this year because I've been working. So my dad's kind of a little bit, doesn't like that too much, but um, I've had a couple runs and stuff and they look pretty good. Sarah was the 1999 Rookie of the Year in the North American Open Championship in Fairbanks. <laughs> I moved to BC in the fall of 74, and uh, 75 was my first race here in Fort Nelson, and I won the race. I turned 70 here a few months ago, so I decided I'd enter again and try her another time. So This will probably be my swan song, though. A quick, clean start for the veteran racer and his second string of Saunderson dogs. I pretty much got the best training I would guess of anyone here because I come from Fairbanks and we've had snow all along. I hope to do well, of course, as everyone does. Um, I think uh, if we have good, clean runs, we'll be, we'll be, uh, be right up there if, 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 you know, with any luck. And Lancer was packing some high hopes along with him and that 16 dog team. Buddy Streeper runs the same number of dogs but puts the family name on the line in this race. Yeah, I'm expecting a good turnout this weekend. It's a big hoopla for the town and I'd like to be the town hero. <laughs> but everybody wants to be the hero on Saturday, including Kevin Cook and his team of 18 Alaskan Huskies. His dogs are from a quieter but nonetheless eager bloodline. Those dogs may be quiet at the starting gate, but once that hook is released, they're explosive out of the starting gate. And here's a quick look at the defending champion, Ross Saunderson, on the course, and he was running well early on Saturday. We see Sarah's dogs here, very focused on the course as they come by, and Eric Lancer working hard to help his team along. This will give you a pretty good idea of just what kind of a day Kevin Cook had on Saturday. Now, running in front there, that's Jason Nickel wearing number four. Wearing the number five race bib, that's Carolyn Johnson. Now, look at Kevin Cook. He started two minutes behind Johnson, four minutes behind Nickel, and he had almost caught both sleds at that point on the course. And Kevin's team is running very strong at the first checkpoint. Also out on the course on Saturday, Zev Chalkinoff, he ran strong but finished 2 minutes 19 seconds behind Saturday's leader. There's Don Cousins. Now he ran a disappointing day because he had to put a dog in the basket and took it out of the string. First time in the open class for Jim Orvis of Montana and he finished out of the top 12. And here's the big story from the racing on Saturday. Ross Saunderson, defending champion and the man who's won this event three times in the last five years, pulling back into the staging area while other dogs were still going out. Well, we had a crash, it's predicted. Yeah, too fast, I blew a corner right there. I blew one of the corners. So Saunderson, the defending champ, is disqualified. Always a disappointment when something like this happens at a race, but you can see that Ross continues to encourage his dogs and to praise them for doing their job well. Saunderson's problem was the biggest one, but not the only one. Watch what happened to John Wood. Oh, I had a dog that got a little weak, so I had a fellow stand on a hook and I came up to the team and he got off the hook. And the team goes flying by, I just grab it as it's going by. It was exciting. <laughs> the 16 dogs of Dave Hockman leading the contenders into the finish area after the competition on Saturday. Hockman finishing fourth on Saturday, and he was only one minute and 38 seconds behind Saturday's leader. In third spot, Buddy Streeper. He was a minute 34 seconds behind the leader on Saturday, four seconds ahead of Hockman. And in second spot, Eric Lanzer, just nine seconds off the lead heading into Sunday's competition. Didn't have any trouble. Every dog stayed on the right side of the line. Every dog worked. It was really a lot of fun. So here's your leader heading into Sunday. It's Canadian Open rookie Kevin Cook finishing the course in a time of 43 minutes and nine seconds, a Canadian Open record. They read the trail better than I did. I had a hard time seeing the trail in this weather, but they were reading it well, and they, they took the right trail anyway and made the right choices. They were running on their own today. I didn't get after them, pushing them too hard, and they were running nice, and 
I think I'll go with that plan again tomorrow at work today. So, but uh, it uh, you really got to watch out there. There's a few corners. Ross happened to get off the trail there and got disqualified, and that's too bad. But it, that's it, you got to keep your eye on the trail there. It's but it can happen to anybody. It can happen to me tomorrow. So as we recap day one here in Fort Nelson, BC, Kevin Cook and Eric Lancer, the class of the field, just nine seconds separating those two drivers. Buddy Streeper is in third place, a minute 34 off the pace right now. Rounding out the top 12, Zev Chalkinoff, Neil Johnson, Jim Harvey, Mark Pearson, Carolyn Johnson, and Don Cousins. In the crisp cold on the Musqua River, there's Sandy Saunderson getting his team ready for the race here on Sunday. And helping out is son Ross Saunderson, disqualified after the events of yesterday. We'll be back right after this. Welcome back to our coverage of the Canadian Open Dog Sled Championships in Fort Nelson, BC. There you're looking at Sandy Saunderson pulling on the mitts and getting on the back of his sled, ready to go out on the course. Lots of sunshine here today, great lighting conditions, which means Sandy is unlikely to be victimized by the flat light, which affected his son Ross yesterday and led to Ross's disqualification. There's Jim Harvey getting his dogs out on the string. Jim Harvey has been a strong competitor here for many years, having won the event in 1983. Now let's explore the area of Fort Nelson, which has been the proud home to the Canadian Open for the past 40 years. Fort Nelson, oh, they treat everybody real well. It's a good race. It's by a good bunch of sponsors, put up a good cash prize money. You get more competition. We got competition here from all over North America. It's interesting that one of the top sled dog breeders is located here and, uh, and that's what also helps keep the sport alive. There's everything from alpine ecosystems in the Northern Rockies to swamp and muskeg type ecosystems to the east of us. That area has been dubbed the Serengeti of the North and the reason for that is because we've got the largest number of wildlife species present in, I believe, all of North America. Fort Nelson being uh, the old mile 300 of the Alaska Highway, this is our, our main street right through Fort Nelson. You are right there on nature's doorstep. What you see today, the blue sky, the sunshine, the, the bright days is what we normally have. It's a real outdoor town. First time up here, first time on the Alaska Highway, and first time I've ever seen a real live dog sled race, mush race, it's super. Just super cold. <laughs> We're a very vibrant and active community. Our, our economic base is primarily oil and gas and forestry. The population of the community itself is about 4,500, so it's a very small population for a very broad area, larger than New Brunswick, for example. And it's, it's, it's a great community. People are wonderful. We only had a two-year commitment, but we're going to stay longer because it is such a, a nice community. You feel quite free here because you're not trampled by thousands of people. And it's cold, but you just dress accordingly. <laughs> well, I love Fort Nelson. Get out, enjoy the outdoors, and uh, you can really have a good time. Back at the starting gate, and there's Jim Harvey getting ready to release the hook and get his team underway. Harvey did pretty good here last year. He placed seventh in the Fort Nelson Open. Uh, his leaders on his team, Laurie and Comet, they're both three-year-old Alaskan Huskies, which means that Jim's got a lot of experience up front. Despite the crisp cold, doesn't seem to be stopping the spectators from showing up here. We're looking at the team now of Neil Johnson wearing race bib number nine. And uh, Neil is part of another racing family here in Sled Dog Racing Faith. Yes, both Neil and his wife compete. They live the summers in Minnesota where they farm and in the winter they move to Alaska and compete on the Alaskan racing circuit. Johnson gets away clean as well. That looks like a good strong start and he heads out on this 15-mile course. 
out on the course now wearing race bib 18. That's Richard Beck, and he's been struggling today. You can tell because in behind him is number 15, John Wood. Wood started six minutes behind Beck, and he's already made up all that ground. For John's going to be very pleased with his team today, as of the front eight dogs, only one raced last year. There's Sandy Saunderson, and his team looks to be running pretty smooth, particularly the leaders, Jem and Lonely. Yeah, that team is going strong and steady. I wouldn't say particularly fast. Also out on the course, this looks like at number 16. That's Sarah Streeper, and uh, she's using that, that pedaling action back behind the sled. Does that really make a difference? Yes, it does. It keeps the sled moving smoothly, and it can be a real encouragement to the team. Here's Don Cousins wearing race bib number 13. Now, he's going with uh, two fewer dogs than yesterday, right? That's right, and the reason for that is one dog was not willing to continue the race yesterday, and it's always easier to have an even number of dogs in your team. Back at the start line, that's Asia and Ruffles. And those are the lead dogs in the team run by Zev Chalkinoff. Chalkinoff uh, finished second recently here uh, at the Canadian Open in Fort Nelson. Well, anything can happen in a dog race, I don't, can't really tell you for sure. Our team are going to go out and do our best. There are lots of two-year-olds and three-year-olds and some older experienced dogs. We've run this trail a number of times. And Chalkinoff steps now behind the sled. A race marshal counts him down, and he gets the sled underway, and he's away smooth. Zev is dragging his foot there to keep the lines tight as the team leaves the chute. With Chalkinoff away, that means racer wearing bib number seven, Eddie Streeper is the next competitor. And Streeper is about as close to a legend as you get in this race. He's won the Open nine times, the first time back in 1979. There's about uh, six or seven really, really super teams here. There's actually 10 very good dog teams here. You could actually have a real good run here and still be 10th, the competition's so good. Leading Streeper's dog team, Willow and Billy. Now Willow's a four-year-old female, Billy, her three-year-old half-brother, and Billy ran yesterday in the lead for the first time with his team, and Streeper was very pleased with the performance. He finished sixth on Saturday in a time of 45 minutes and nine seconds. An update on some of our competitors on the course. Right. There's Hans Reitz. Dog is wearing a coat. That's correct. Some of the dogs are more sensitive to the cold than others, and a coat helps them. Wearing race bib number 10, there it is, Jim Harvey and uh, his team looks to be running pretty smoothly. Bye-bye. You can hear Jim Harvey speaking and whistling to now. his team so that their tension doesn't wander and they there remain you know. focused on the trail. Here's Jim Orvis now, and he's running the bare minimum number of dogs. He's running a team of 12 today, and uh, you can see by this close-up camera here that that ride is not nearly as smooth as it looks from that long shot. As you can see, there is some blood on the face of one of Jim's dogs. This is not a big concern, as it comes from a small nick on the dog's tongue from touching a snap or a collar. Well, it's good to know that that certainly isn't a serious injury, and it doesn't seem to be affecting the performance of uh, any of Jim's dog team. Jim Orvis running right there, and uh, the leader with the one with the blood on the face. Well, there's a look at Eric Lancer, nine seconds off the lead as he prepares to make his run for the title here on Sunday. Back with more coverage of the Canadian Open from Fort Nelson, B.C. in just a moment. Welcome back to Fort Nelson as the Canadian Sled Dog Championships continue. We're going to take you back to the starting line now where racer number six, Bill Kornmuller, is getting his team ready. Kornmuller was fifth after yesterday's run. He's a minute 42 behind the leaders. They're kind of small, but they're as fast as I've ever had, so I guess I'm lucky to get them up in the lead. And they're both four-year-olds, so they've got a fair amount of experience. So I feel pretty good about it for this weekend. Bill's lead dogs are in the prime of their racing life. One considers a dog young to be racing at two, but between three and seven or eight years old is when a sled dog is at its best. There's Dave Hockman of Manitoba wearing race bib number five. He's going to check his string of dogs one more time just to make sure they're all lined up and ready to go. There is leaders, Malcolm and Shep. He says Malcolm is, in fact, a natural leader. Dogs are able to run flat out to the best of their ability. It's a lot better to have a, a trail where the dogs are confident to, uh, to open up like that. All right, all right, all right. 
Dave's team would be very accustomed to running on flat trails coming from southern Manitoba. Former champion Buddy Streeper will be next out on the course. Buddy's making some nervous adjustments to his dog's lines there. Many mushers have small habits or nervous rituals they go through as they wait. I've been running a, dog, a white dog named Swifty. She's a four-year-old. She's been running the eat out of our kennel for three years now. And another small female named Tina. She's a five-year-old, so they're both experienced dogs. They've run this race before. Swifty won it with me two years ago. She's seen the trail before. Boy, Swifty and Tina seem awfully eager as they get out of the starting gate here. Yes, indeed. The Streeper Kennel has produced many fine leaders in recent years. An update from back out on the course now. That's Neil Johnson. His team is led by Nola and Iris, and he's using a crossbreed of Alaskan Huskies and bird dogs, Faye. Yes, that's a uh, influence from the European racing circuit where they have used German short-haired pointers and in recent years have crossed those dogs into the Alaskan Husky lines. This is Mark Pearson. His team is led by Doxy and Skinny and Pearson's getting down into a crouch behind the sled. Yeah, sometimes the mushers are feeling the bite of the cold air as well. Pearson seems to be moving pretty smoothly though. He's back up rather quickly and leaning forward now over the handrail of that sled. Our next competitor, this is Zev Chalkinoff, and he's at the first checkpoint now. And Chalkinoff was seventh after the run on Saturday, but he's got the opportunity to move up a couple of places today, and that could be a difference of as much as $500 in prize money this afternoon. Zev's dogs appear to be moving along very smoothly. Now here we've got Eddie Streeper, race bib number seven, and he's got his arm in the air, Faye. What's going on here? Eddie is signaling to the people who are on the bank that he requires some assistance. You can hear him whistling and calling to them. You can also see there's a dog in his team that is pulling back and causing the team Peter, to falter. To my hook. This is a very dangerous situation for the dog and the whole team, and it's quite essential that Eddie be able to remove that dog from the team to prevent further injury. Well, he's got the team stopped in an awfully big hurry here, and now he dashes up to find the problem. It looks like he's gonna have to take that dog off the string, uh, put the dog in a bag, and then slip the dog back onto the sled in a basket. And it's a good thing it happened right here by the bridge uh, where he had the opportunity to get some assistance from some of those race fans who are watching. Streeper's back up and running again. He's trying to get the mitts back on and he's put the dog into the basket. So he's running with one fewer dog right now than he was just a couple of minutes ago. Our final two competitors are waiting to go at the start line. This is Eric Lancer now. He's in second place, and if anybody's got a chance to catch Kevin Cook, it's Lancer, because after Saturday's run, he was only nine seconds off the pace. Eric is greeting each of his pairs of dogs and encouraging them before the race, and it establishes in the dog's mind the relationship he has with the musher. He's a real good dog. Um, he does the right thing. He wants to please. He's just... He's a dog that you get maybe once every five years. So he's, uh, it's, he's turned out to be what, kind of what I wanted. So that's, that would be my main guy this year. The Lancer takes the countdown and he's got his sled away. And Eric Lancer, Faye, has a bit of an edge, I think, over the rest of the field because he's already run his team this year at the prelim in Fairbanks. That's correct. The Fairbanks area has had snow much sooner than anywhere else in Canada. Hey. Here's our leader now, Kevin Cook. He ran on Saturday in a time of 43 minutes, nine seconds, and he holds a nine second lead over Eric Lancer. Yeah, Kevin's wife is holding his lead dogs there. The families often travel together, and this is very much a family endeavor. Got some last minute adjustments to make, and let's get to Kevin's thoughts after he ran yesterday, find out what his strategy is for today. We had a good run, a little bit of trouble passing. I had one tangle up, but. Other than that, things went good. The dogs were running really nice. Pretty happy with him. Cook takes the countdown. He's ready to go. He stumbles a bit out of the starting gate here. Yeah, he didn't quite get a hold of his uh, snow hook there from the start, but he has it loaded now. So all of our dog sled teams are now out on the course. And you know, these are high performance athletes and they need a very special kind of care. So everything about racing is the biggest concern is the welfare of the dog do nothing in a race that would interfere with the health or hurt a dog. So that's the primary concern of all races, it has to be dog friendly. We have a saying in, in, in sled dog racing that if you don't have any feet, you don't have any team. 
you know, the conditions here are actually pretty good. We've got some nice soft snow, but when, the wet, when it gets colder, the snow tends to ball up on their feet and can cut them. So before the dogs go out, we put wax on their feet so it doesn't ball up the snow. And if they're real bad, we'll boot the dogs. Uh, we work with these dogs right from when they're little wee puppies and bring them right up into the athletes that they've become. And we don't want anything going wrong with them. We can all help it. I mean, we spend tons of time with our dogs. This morning we were out um, after we watered them and we let all 40 dogs loose so we can watch them all run around, make sure everybody's happy and feeling good. These guys are really highly specialized athletes. They're probably the premier athletes in the world. We've done tests on them when I was a professor back at Cornell where we ran them on the treadmill and measured their oxygen uptake. And the oxygen uptake of these dogs will be three times what the very best human athlete is. So that's why they can run at 20 miles an hour for an hour to an hour and a half, you know, and pulling somebody on a sled. And when they do that type of thing, they're burning 11,000 calories a day, which is per pound, on a per pound body weight comparison, eight times what a Tour de France cyclist eats. So these little 20 kilogram dogs are eating 11,000 calories a day. I don't think a human could eat that much. So what we've worked on over the last 10 years is to try to come up with diets that meet the special requirements of these dogs. This is like a block of fat here for supplementing, supplementing their food with a fat, high energy fat when it's cold. This is a block of meat. Here's the ingredients, uh, beef, chicken, beef liver, cooked egg, corn oil, wheat germ oil, and steamed bone meal. So you can see these dogs are eating a really quality diet. One of the things that we're doing right now is going around and giving these dogs little ice cubes that are full of carbohydrates to help them replace the carbohydrates they use during exercise so that tomorrow they'll be able to go out and run with a full gas tank. It's just um, what's called glycocharge, and you freeze them in uh, with a little gelatin and ice cubes, and they freeze just like this, and the dogs really love them. <laughs> Some of them get stressed a little bit, just like people do, so they need a little extra TLC around race time. But, um, yeah, that's, that's the most fun part of it, actually, is the building up and taking care of them up to the race. The race is just sort of the icing on the cake. The 40th running of the Canadian Open Sled Dog Championships from Fort Nelson, B.C. continue in a moment. Welcome back to the Canadian Open Sled Dog Championships in Fort Nelson, B.C. Let's get back to the course. There's our leader, Kevin Cook. And boy, Faye, his team seems to be running awfully smooth. Oh, the sight of a long dog team stretched out running hard like that just makes a musher's heart sing. Let's see what we've got on the course as well. That looks like a buddy streeper and right behind him on his tail, Eric Lancer. Boy, what a battle this has turned out to be. Lancer's obviously made up some ground on Buddy Streeper, and he's really closed the gap here. You can see Buddy and Eric are both working very hard to assist their teams and doing their utmost to win this race. Here's our onboard camera now aboard Buddy Streeper's sled. You can see how the trail lays out in front of him. His team has its work cut out for him, and right on Streeper's heels, there is Eric Lancer. You know, it's not just dogs that make these teams go fast, it's the sleds as well. Let's take a look at that key piece of equipment. It takes a lot of craftsmanship to make a sled. You can make a sled, but to make a good quality sled, it takes a lot of experience and know-how. This is the basket of the sled. There's different sizes of baskets and we put bags in here to uh, carry things or, or to carry dogs if a dog should get injured or tired or not feeling good that day and you need to carry the dog. This is what we call a brush bow of the sled and this part of the sled is so that if you go around a corner too wide a little bit out of control and you hit some brush or a tree it, it deflects off the tree. This is the brake. This is so you can stop when you're out on the trail. It, it digs in and it stops. And then once you're stopped, you have to have something to keep you stopped. This is what we call a snow hook or an anchor. And it holds the dogs in the ground while stopped while you run up and do something, switch, untangle, or, or whatever it is you have to do. But they're made to go in, uh, in the snow and ice, and you, you keep them fairly sharp so that they'll grab good on the ice like on the rivers here. Once you put the snow hooks, the ropes, the bags, other little extra spare pieces on them, you're probably looking at close to 30 pounds per sled. But we don't really want them too much heavier than that. There's a bit of a trade-off. So you make it too light, then it's not going to last. It'll maybe break. It can't take the torque and the pressure. 
these runners are wood laminations. There's one, two, three, four, five laminations, and they have uh, different components in between them, graphite or fiberglass put in between. We wax the runners. Everybody's looking for every little bit of advantage they can. So we're waxing just like downhill skiers, trying to get the, the slickest glide that we can. It used to be you won or lost races by minutes, now you win or lose races by seconds. Sometimes it comes right down to just that last little bit, and if you happen to have maybe a little bit better wax and slide, it's just been a little bit easier for your dogs the whole way around the trail, and they have that extra little bit at the end to finish a little stronger than the next guy. Back out on the course, and there's a look at our leader, Kevin Cook, and boy, this team looks awfully smooth and looks like it's going to be awfully tough to beat today. Now, this is Carolyn Johnson's team. Now, her lead dogs are just yearlings. That's Nickel and Kelp. Faye, that, isn't that a bit of a risk? Well, it is, and I think Carolyn is running uh, young dogs to give them race experience to prepare them for future years, and Neil, her husband, is running the first string. Now, this is Zeb Chalkanoff's team, and he's got his team stopped completely. It looks like they're trying to get the dogs untangled. Yeah, there must have been some small problem there that he felt that the helper at the side of the trail there could solve for him without leaving his sled. That's going to cost Chalkanoff some time. He struggles to get the mix back on now. And here's Neil Johnson. Uh, you talked about him just a moment ago. You say he's running the lead string for the Johnsons. Yeah, for sure. You can see the bird dogs in that string of dogs as their ears flap along. Johnson's got the pump going there, trying to get every last ounce of speed out of that sled of his. Volunteers are a vital part of every race organization, and here's one keeping checkpoint times. There's Bill Kornmuller wearing race bib number six, and he's leaning in right now. Oh, he's getting some instructions. Sounds like he's getting some information about another competitor. That looks like Dave Hawkman back there. His team looks to be running pretty smooth as well. And we're back on board Buddy Streeper's sled right now. We're taking a look at uh, how the course lays out in front of him. And Streeper seems to have his team moving at a pretty good pace right now. You can hear Streeper signaling to his dogs by a whistle. This is often done to encourage the team or to catch the attention of any dog that may be faltering. Oh, yes, Buddy does have a problem. He's going to have to cut one of the dogs loose from the string here. Yes, they need to confine that dog securely inside the sled dog bag for the safety of the animal. And the dog's in the basket. Streeper's on his way. And here's Eric Lancer running in second spot after Saturday's event. He's got his team working very smoothly at the moment. You can see his lead dog there dip for snow. That is a mechanism that dogs use to cool their inner temperature when they're racing. The information that checkpoint people give is very important to the racers. How am I doing? How am I doing? Dogs, uh, three quarters of a mile in front of you. There are some of the race fans standing by near the finish line, and here come some of the first finishers of the afternoon. This is Morris Blake, and he's had a pretty good run this afternoon. You'll look just behind Blake. That's the sled of Dean Seabold. Blake passing Seabold on the course, so he'll be happy with his performance. And coming in right on Seabold's heels, that's Sandy Saunderson. And we're watching the end to a long and storied sled racing career today. And Saunderson didn't have anyone pass him this afternoon. He'll be very satisfied with his performance today. And coming around the final turn, that's number 16. That's the sled of Sarah Streeper. Sarah's uh, finishing her race and her dogs are looking for the dog truck and a warm bed of straw to lay on. These dogs love to run. This is what they're bred to do and this is what they do best. Dogs are very excited at a race site and eager to run. A cold afternoon for you here in Fort Nelson, BC and we'll be back with more from the finishing line in just a couple of minutes. Welcome back to Fort Nelson. Let's get you caught up on the leaders. That's Eric Lancer out there, and he's looking back, and he's looking for Kevin Cook. Cook was the leader after Saturday. Lancer is hoping he can put enough distance between himself and Cook in order to win this event. 
Coming into the finish line now, that's the number nine racing bib of Neil Johnson. And Johnson crosses the line in a time of 45 minutes, six seconds. He'll be happy with that. That's 35 seconds faster than yesterday. There's Zev Chokhanov out of there on the course, and he's got a little companion with him, bringing a Raven back home to the finish line. Chokhanov is coming in hard, and looks like he's going to be pretty close to his time from yesterday. 45 minutes and 35 seconds today, just seven seconds off his time from yesterday. Here's Eddie Streeper now. Streeper had that problem a little bit earlier on, and he's carrying one of his dogs in the basket. You can see it in the bag there, the blue bag. Streeper coming around the final turn. And he comes in at a time of 46 minutes, 7 seconds, 58 seconds slower, no doubt because of that problem he had on the course a little bit earlier this afternoon with his dog. A small collection of fans doing anything they can to keep warm here at the finish line. Here's Bill Kornmuller now, and he's driving for the finish line. He crosses in a time of 45 minutes, 5 seconds. It would appear that Bill has lost one of his gloves. There's Kevin Cook, the leader, and he looks pretty comfortable on the sled at this point. Kevin Cook making his way through the last checkpoint here, and he's headed towards the finish line. We'll catch up with Kevin in just a couple of minutes. I had the team put together. I kind of shuffled the deck from yesterday, and I had the right dogs in the right place. I ended up loading the wheel dog in a kind of an unlikely place, and my hands were froze up, and oh, geez, I took way too long to get it done. So it was a lot of fun. It was just a whole lot colder today, that's for sure. Back to the finish line now, pumping hard. This is Buddy Streeper headed for home. His dogs crossed the finish line at a time of 45 minutes and 25 seconds. And right behind Streeper, here comes Eric Lancer. Lancer coming in with a time of 43 minutes and 42 seconds. Not quite as good as his time on Saturday. We'll have to wait and see now how Kevin Cook does to find out whether or not Lancer was fast enough to beat Cook on this Sunday afternoon. And there he is, Kevin Cook, headed for home. And Faye, it looks like he's got that sled going awfully smoothly right now. It certainly does, and it would appear that Kevin has the team to beat through this mushy year. Those dogs are not letting up at all as they round that final turn now, and they make their way towards the finish line. And Kevin Cook's team crosses the finish line at a time of 42 minutes and 42 seconds. That's outstanding. That's better than yesterday's time and we believe a new Canadian Open record. Let's give you a rundown now on the second day of competition here at the Canadian Open Dog Sled Championship in Fort Nelson, BC. Kevin Cook in a time of 42-42, a record time. Eric Lancer and Don Cousins rounding out the top three. A big improvement for Cousins over yesterday. There's the rest of the top 12, and we'll be back with more after this. Well, quite a day of racing here in Fort Nelson, B.C. Let's hear from the drivers now of some of these top dogs. I had a, just a wonderful run. I mean, nothing went wrong, and he just had a faster team today. That's all. I was, I'm tickled pink with the way they ran. There's Buddy Streeper. He seems pretty happy. Go. Not bad. Yeah. Pretty good. Yeah, it's a hard trail. Hey, good job, Kevin. Thank you. Thanks. Congratulations. Yeah. The organizers are tallying up the two-day totals now for the racers, so let's go to the leaderboard and take a look at who won the 40th Canadian Sled Dog Championship. Kevin Cook in a time of one hour, 25 minutes and 52 seconds. And for that, Cook takes home $3,600 in prize money. Eric Lancer finishing second, about a full minute behind Cook. Bill Kornmuller coming in third spot, and he was well back of the two leaders. Buddy Streeper finishing in fourth place and rounding up the top five. It was Dave Hockman in a time of one hour, 30 minutes and 20 seconds. Now let's hear from the winner of today's event, Kevin Cook, who was a rookie coming here to Fort Nelson, B.C. Oh, it went pretty good. They just ran their speed, and they wanted to run again today. We were rock and rolling. I think we either beat our time of yesterday, and that was fast, or very close to it. So they really, they like to go, and they keep that line tight up in front, and that's what you need is two fast leaders to keep the rest of the team rolling along at the pace you want. If the leaders aren't setting the pace, the rest of the team isn't going to give you what, what they've got. We've got, uh, oh, five or six yearlings in the team that are 
looking really good. We'll probably race them all this season, which is nice to see the yearlings being able to run. So next couple years, our kennel looks pretty, pretty good. So a great weekend of racing capped by an outstanding record-setting performance by Kevin Cook here in Fort Nelson, BC. There's not much time to rest for these top dogs, but they do receive a pat on the head for a job well done. So for the first time since 1988, someone other than a Streeper or a Saunderson takes home the winner's check at the Canadian Open Sled Dog Championships. Congratulations to Kevin Cook. On behalf of color commentator Faye Cousins, I'm Al Stafford. Thanks for watching, everyone, and so long from Fort Nelson, B.C.